can agile coaches give advice? That's what we're going to talk about in this video, my friend. I know you sometimes hear that as a question, sometimes as a form of a statement. I'll promise you, I'll give you my one word answer in this video, but I also promise you there's way more to it. So I would say it all lies in the stance, in the perspective of advising. Let's get into it. Can coaches give advice? The simple answer for professional coaches is no, they simply cannot. It's not how the framework for professional coaching propels their clients to success. Now remember, because that's important, there is a difference between a professional coach and an agile coach. Now the question becomes, can agile coaches give advice? Yes, you can. And as a matter of fact, you are expected to, I would say even sometimes a little bit too much. But the truth of the matter is that you can give advice and that's what the advisor stance is. It is a, a less telling, however, in a more inquisitive role, actually. So here's an example. People don't have to scramble to understand why their work keeps bottlenecking or why all the releases keep failing. You can point straight up to avenues to solve for that. You can share a checklist. You can share your personal playbook. Um, you know, you can talk about the things that you're observing on how people do things. And you can even share success stories on how you and other teams tried and succeeded in the past. You don't need to just confuse people or be evasive and drop questions such as, what do you think? Or what might we discover? And then just disappear. Don't get me wrong, those are great questions, but it's important for you to understand that as an agile coach, you do more than just asking questions, no matter how powerful they are. And there are moments in which pointing to ideas and solutions actually might be best than just sharing questions and trying to see if people get an insight from it. If agile coaches can give advice, well, what are the conditions for successful advising? What does that look like? So let's get into them. First, not often. How often is too often? I don't know. Um, you know, if people ask for something to do every single day, which means you're advising on something every single day, if it's always the same group, and if it's always around a, a particular theme, maybe you're better off trying to coach those people and understand a little bit more what's going on. But you know, if every week on when there's something a little bit hairy going on and you have insight, then don't withhold information, just go for it and give the advice nicely, gently, see where it lands. So example, you can't just keep telling people to not pick up a lot of work. This is an example of an advice that's just not useful and it's probably quite often. Either people don't understand how nefarious it is to take up a lot of work, in which case you're better off just have genuine conversations and have some coaching with that team. But if they are already aware of how bad that is and they actually are looking for solutions, well, just pick up a technique or two to do some backlog management to look at their process queue and, uh, and start from there. Don't withhold information, go straight on the advice, if you will. Here's a good technique, let's use it. Then condition number two is never give unsolicited advice. I think there's a saying going on that unsolicited advice is the junk mail of life. And I think it's quite true. I mean, if a person is not experiencing a problem uh, or if they are experiencing a problem, but they are still in their own process for figuring things out, you are better off letting them do it and not interfere with their learning and thinking process. It can be very off-putting. You can make people perceive you as someone who always tells them what to do. And to be quite frankly, many times you don't understand the circumstances of what's going on. And that leads us to the next one. Listen first. What is the problem? What is the nuance? What is really at play here? Very few things are in practice what they really seem to be. In those problems where people are struggling for so long or asking for advice, they probably gave it some thought already. So you're not going to come up with a fantastic solution right off the bat. So in order for you to be effective going into your Rolodex of ideas and solutions, you really need to be very present and understand 
all of the elements of what the person is going through. First, is it really a problem? If it is a problem, what is it that you know? What is it that you don't know? What have they tried already? All that sort of thing. If you found a solution or if you have an idea, give a context. So don't just throw something out in there. There's a reason why you selected that idea, that hypothesis to be tested with the person. Well, then explain it, make it clear, make it so the person can decide, well, okay, I'll take this advice or I'll think about it and decide later or nope, I'll reject it right away. Context can go a little further too. So there is, for example, this one um, senior manager who was going through being perceived as too strong headed by their team members. And it was mostly in the uh, spoken interactions. And you know by now that SCARF is one of the favorite ways that I, I really enjoy learning and filtering my language through that. Doesn't mean I'm excellent and I always succeed, but it's a fantastic framework. I had a video on that in here, so I suggest you check it out. So unsurprisingly, I, I try and improve and I help everybody that I can to filter their messaging through a scarf and I explained what it was and I gave an example to this particular uh, senior manager and we took one specific difficult message that they had to give um, in, in the week after and we actually spend the, you know, the time that we had trying to craft that message a little bit more on the reward side of things. So if you know what I mean that um, in SCARF, the reward is when your messaging is actually just simply not threatening and somehow exciting and inviting. Uh, that's one example also of giving context. Don't just drop there. Have you heard of SCARF? Here's a link. Go read about it. No, no, no. If you really have an advice to give, you should be someone who is able to use the context of the person or show in which context you have used that tool, that idea, that context before. Also, when you give advice, make it clear that it's not a rule. What do I mean by that? When you're offering advice, think about this. I am offering. You don't have to accept, right? It's an offer. Uh, the other part of it is that, um, you know, maybe you tested it in a very particular situation. So I'm reminding you, you know, that team particularly was a multidisciplinary team or a distributed team or no, those were very particularly collocated people. I'm not sure if it works in your scenario, but do you want to give it a try? So making it very clear to that person that you're not just giving like that magic solution that will solve everything. It's also an important part of the advising process. And be inquisitive. Don't take things at face value. You really want to understand how bad the situation is for the other person. You also want to remember the ethical sides of it and see if you really should be advising in that case, if there is someone maybe more, uh, you know, better position to, um, to help in the situation. Basically just keeping an open mind and even through your questions and through your very intentive listening and, and investigating with the person, that in itself might be a wonderful help and that process actually solves things for the person asking for advice. Putting it all together, I guess we could think about words of advice on advising and the first one would be be mindful of the fact that you are an expert. What do I mean by that? It's not uncommon that you know a lot of things, you have many techniques, you have many insights that you gather throughout your career, but you may be a master of your craft, but you're not a master of the context in which the problem occurs or where the person works. Sometimes someone could be asking about, I don't know, JIRA labels, and what that actually reveals is, is a problem on how to signal things across teams. And it might seem like, well, it's simple and you should be doing this. And then you remember a moment where you helped other teams to, in JIRA, use the labels in a certain way. You already went on a level of expertise that actually might not even need to be solved in that way and might justify a conversation or something entirely different. So remember you're expert in the concept, in the technique on certain things, but you are never an expert in the context. The other person is and is an expert in their context, even if they don't know it. So keep that in mind. You should 
probably refrain from giving advice whenever you can. I mean, it shouldn't be your first instinct. And whenever giving any sort of advice, never, never when not contextualized. If advising, even with the best intentions and all the knowledge, shouldn't be your first instinct, what do you replace that with then? I think it's one of the same things you do in coaching, which is get curious. Get curious and start asking questions. You know, what would that advice give to you in particular? Are you, are you asking me particularly and only, or who else are you asking this to? Are you collecting insights so then you are able to choose from after, or are you going to take what I'm giving you right now and just run with it? You're in a hurry. You need to solve a problem, that sort of thing. Another advice is to not get caught up in the drama. What I mean by that is the person is in a hurry. The person is in distress. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in distress. Stop. Think, do you really have any advice to give? And I am guilty of very early on in my career and for quite some time, you know, feeling like I have to solve for, and especially if you come from a career path where you have been solving a lot of problems, you just take the person problems and now it's mine. I'll, I'll you know, I'll fix it. So resist that and really think, do I have good <laughs> advice that could be given in here. And chances are you don't, you don't and respect that and be honest and, and just say that in this particular case, you know, you know what, I would need to think about it if you have the time, because right now I can think of anything. Do you have that time or do we need to be looking for alternatives? Do we need to talk to someone else? Finally, remember that advising is a stance, is a position of trust, of influence, of partnership. You can't assume that you have that, okay? You have to, to build it. It's a relationship. So pay attention to it, my friend. So I'm thinking we could end this video with a few questions for you to start creating and embodying for yourself with your own unique characteristics, that stance of advisor. So that when the time comes for you to build a relationship with people and being their trusted advisor, you know how he feels inside and who you are in that particular mindset. So let's try it. What does advising look like to you? How is it possible for you to give advice while maintaining a coaching presence. How do you sound when you give advice? Would you word things differently? Would you have a few go-to questions to avoid rushing into expert mode? What do you need to know about yourself and how do you need to think to give impactful advice? Are there places uh, or situations that you rather not go to? Impactful advice really depends on you knowing yourself very well and establishing that important partnership with your client, whether they are several teams, one person, but it's a much necessary step for you to grow and master your career as an agile coach, as a consultant, or maybe we're in a leadership position. It's definitely an exercise worth doing and several times, because especially the last question that I asked, I mean, you're constantly changing, right? So you're going to be responding differently and it's it's always interesting to know who is the person that you are right now as that trusted advisor. So I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.